the previous examples that we saw were all C functions. So since C++ is a superset of C, all these examples are off also perfectly valid in C++. So you you know if you compiled the code using G++ rather than GCC, it would still compile because it's perfectly valid C++ code. But C++ is an object-oriented extension of C, which means it also supports using classes. Now, this doesn't work the other way in the fact that C is a subset of C++ and so does not support classes. So you can use functions in C++, but you cannot use classes in C. So look here, so this is our, this circle represents a C programming language, kind of Venn diagram, if you will. And as part of the C programming language, we've got functions. The C++ is a superset of C, so it encompasses all, everything that's part of C, so we know for loops, while loops, um, all the different uh, data types and so on, printf, all, everything to do with C is encompassed in C++ as well. But classes are just part of C++, they're defined in this extension to C, so you cannot use classes inside of C. So we'll look now how to create a class and how to, do, well, how to define a class. So a class basically defines a set of variables. It's what we call member variables because these variables are members of the class as well as a set of functions. So we call functions and the class is me there are methods. So we've essentially got our data, those variables and some functions what are methods as part of this class. So we need to define the variables as well as the functions. Now these, this class is typically held separately from the main source file. So up to this point, we've just been seeing main.cpp, for example. But, um, you know, here when we create our classes, we'll be in, they'll be in separate files. They won't be in kind of main.cpp. So we normally have two files. In fact, we've got a header file. So this defines the interface of the class. Then we've got a separate file that contains implementations of the class. So this, basically splitting the code up like this, it moves all the code to do with that class into separate files, and it makes our main file much less cluttered, and it's just easier to debug and maintain and write when the main file you know, contains less code. So the reason we do this is this idea of encapsulation. So the methods in the class typically act on the data inside of that class in order to do something useful. So everything to do with that class is just encapsulated inside of the class. So it basically means once you've written and developed this class, or even somebody else has written and developed the class, when you're the, when you're using the class, you just treat it like a black box. We don't really care about the code inside of the class. You know, that's been written. It's all encapsulated inside. We just need to know how to interface with this uh, class. So when we create an instance of this class, we call it an object. So we just need to know how to use this object. We don't necessarily care what's going on inside of the object. So it's everything's encapsulated inside and then we can just treat it like a black box. So we just need to know how to interface with this object and we do that using the API. You may come across this term. That basically means application, program and interface. So this will define the kind of methods and the data we can interact with in the class. So when you actually make a uh, when you make a class, you've got tend to have a constructor method. So this is where it constructs the ob object. So inside the constructor, we often do some initialization or maybe set a default values or so on. And then we can start creating our uh, member variables and member methods. So these, actually, these can actually be public or private. So you can probably guess public members are ones that can be accessed by the users of the class and private members basically can't be accessed by users of the class. So you can only use them within the class. So you tend to make things private. You don't want people to mess around and you know, you've got a variable, you've got a variable inside of your class. What's kind of say very important or whatever. You don't really want the users to be able to modify that variable because if they give it an incorrect value, 
it might stop it working, for example. So you can make that variable private and it just means then that users of the class can't actually affect that variable. And they can only access public uh, variables. So the other type of methods that we make are called accessor methods. So accessor methods allow users to get values from the class. So if you want to access a value, you don't do it directly. You'll do it through an accessor method. And then a mutator method is the opposite. So this allows users to set values in the class. So they don't set the values or variables directly. You do so by calling a mutator method. So I just want to briefly mention the embed compiler. So the embed platform essentially consists of a series of C++ classes that allow us as embedded software developers to interface with microcontroller peripherals in a very straightforward and easy manner. So rather than having to write all this kind of low level code to control all the different peripherals, there's a series of classes already been developed for us. So we often call these libraries. So then rather than writing that code yourself, you can import the library from the embed developer web page, And then there you can also find the API. So these will tell you how to use this class. So an example for it is the digital out class. So in this one, this, this class takes care of hand setting up microcontroller pins as outputs. So we can use that to toggle LEDs and so on. So if you wanted to write some code to toggle an LED, you don't have to do a lot of the low level, um, you know, you'd have to do a lot of the low level development interface with the registers and so on. There's this kind of high level class called digital light, which allows us to do it very easily, as we'll see later in the course. So we're going to now go through an example. We're basically going to refactor the circle example code. So this says C functions into a C++ class. So now we're going to tend to create these two extra files. One, we've got circle.h. So you, you know, the .h tells us it's a header file. And this is going to contain um, the interface. And it's going to define the class. And the actual implementation of those methods will be in the circle cpp file so we need to create two separate files circle.h circle.cpp so we'll look in the header file so the first so first thing in the header file again we're defining pi so you know we know we're going to be doing some trigonometry uh, trigonometry so we need to know pi so i've created this variable here pi and there we do this is the definition of the class so we can see we use this class keyword here then we've got the name of our class and essentially open and close in curly brackets with a semicolon. So all the class is actually defined here. This is the definition of the class. So we're going to define some public things. So these are the things that users of this class will be able to um, use. So you can see we've got the public and we've got colons here. So this is not a semicolon, this is a colon. Then we've got a list of our public. Well, here it's got public methods. So We've got our constructor. So the constructor is just essentially the name of the class. And we're not, um, you know, we're not going to put any, uh, no arguments here in this example. Then we've got various uh, public methods here. So one is called set radius. So we're not going to return anything here. So we often use this notation of set and get. It just helps you to remember. So we want to set the radius, so we're not, we're not going to return anything here. And because we're setting it, we need to pass a value in, so we're going to pass in the radius. And then we've got these, so this will be our, um, so this is an example of a mutator method. So we're going to mutate or change a variable inside of the class. And then we've got three accessor methods. So the accessor methods allow us to get the area, get the diameter, and get the circumference. So it's you know, if you use this notation when you're writing your classes, it makes it easier than uh, when you're working and developing the code. And then we define one private member variable here. So this is a variable, not a method. I've called it radius. So you can see here, I've put underscore in front. So this is a very common coding style. So if you put um, member variables, if you put the underscore in front, it just reminds you you know, it's a good reminder that this is a member variable of that class. 
So then this separate file here, that's the header file, and then the separate file circle.cpp. The first thing we need to do is include the header file. So when this actually compiles, you know, the C sorry, the C processor is essentially going to stick all that code and it's just going to stick it here. And then the first thing we've got is the actual implementation of our circle constructor here. So notice because actually the class is defined, the class is just defined here. Because these functions are set outside of the class, this is why we need to use this strange looking syntax here. So this is a class name, circle, and then two colons. And then we've got the name of the constructor. So this, so in the constructor here, all we're going to do is just going to give the radius a a um, default value. So if you just, if you create an object, if you create a circle object here, by default it's just going to have a radius of one. So you can see it's also a good practice when you do that to implementations in your CPP file, you do them in the same order as you've got the um, declarations here. So the one. So the second part here, we've got setting the radius. So this is just like the Pretty much like the function prototype we saw, and we've got the definitions here. So this the actual variable we're going to pass in is called radius. So we've got underscore radius equals radius. So this is one of the reasons we use this, just so we don't get confused between the member variables and these arguments that we're passing in. So that's our mutator method where we're setting the value of the radius. Then we've got our three accessor methods. So this is where if you call get area, it's going to do pi times radius times radius. So note here, we've used this underscore just to make sure we're using this variable here. So get area, get diameter, and get circumference. So that then, we've got our code we've got before now, we've got it converted into a class. So just some notes to keep in mind. So we're going to hide the actual radial, radius member variable by declaring it private. So we don't want people to be able to uh, access that directly. We need to do it through the this set radius mutator method. Now it is kind of a typical coding style to prefix a member variable with an underscore. And so we've got our set radius mutator methods. This allows the users to modify that value. And we've got several accessor methods. So I allow users to get the values for the area, circumference and diameter. And then we have to use this scope operator, that's these two, two colons, and it allows us to define the member methods outside of the class itself. So now we've got this class, or maybe you've found the class on the internet, you know, somebody's released it as a library. So now you, you know, if you're writing your main code, you need to do something with a circle rather than writing that code yourself. You can just include a class in your code. So in this example here, so this will be main. So, so this will be main.cpp. So again, we're going to do some printing. So we need to include stdio to get access to printf. Now we're going to include um, a class, this circle class. So there's not here for system library files. We're using these kind of greater than less than symbols so this is for system so this is like a sense like a system library if you will but typically these classes where we use they'll be in this so when the system ones I mean they're installed somewhere on your computer they're not necessarily in the directory that you're working in but when you write your own class or you're using a class you've been ported off the internet it's normally go, it's going to be in essentially in the same directory as your main file so that's how we use these um, the quotes then. So double quotes is essentially saying this is a local header file and that is um, saying it's a system one. So just be wary when, you, when you're doing that. So now we've included in this circle, we can just use it in our code then. So inside main, we call the constructor. So this is a, the name of the constructor. So it's often, the constructor's often got the same name as the class itself. So here, 
I call a constructor and thus to make it confusing I'm, I'm going to call the object so this is the name then of the object so it's an instance of that class or an object and I've called it circle so we normally use uppercase for class names and then objects we normally use lowercase so I've called it here circle but I could call it my circle or um, circle one circle two or whatever so that's just the name of it so here I've just called it circle with lowercase so now we've got this circuit now we've got this circle object we can call the set radius method so we're using using this dot syntax here as you can see so we can just do circle dot set radius and then pass in the value 0 0.5 so this is how we you know this this dot allows us to call um the verb ver various uh, member methods so that then so at this point remember we call the constructor this had a default radius of one and the constructor we defined it to be default so the next step here so this will set the radius to be 0 0.5 and then we can get the area just by doing circle dot get area so again using this dot syntax we call that get area method that will get returned and stored in this variable area which we can then just print with printf so you can see this is nice because all this you know all the code is held in this uh, separate class and then we just create the objects and we can just access the different uh, methods and so on so our main file is nice and um, you know it's less cluttered all that implementation is a separate file